This training video will focus on the last few steps of FEMA's direct housing process, commonly called the Haul and Install Mission. We will pick up from the point where manufactured housing units are hauled from the staging area and follow the process through setting up the unit and ensuring everything in the unit is functioning before it's ready for occupancy. Prior to these steps, a USACE quality assurance inspector has already visited a homeowner's site and completed the site inspection request form to determine feasibility and potential placement of the unit for which the applicant was approved. The QA inspector has also already drawn a sketch of the site, indicating utilities, obstacles, distances to and from existing structures, and the proposed location of the unit. The QA inspector has gotten the homeowner to sign a right of entry, or ROE form, to allow USACE FEMA and the haul and install contractor to access the homeowner's site during the process of placing and setting up the MHU. FEMA uses the completed Site Inspection Request Form, or SIR, sketch, and ROE form to process the request into a work order. At this point, a new team of USACE QA inspectors, under the supervision of several QA supervisors, enters the process. Approximately 5 to 10 QA inspectors will work for a single QA supervisor. It's up to the QA supervisor to divide the work orders between his or her team of QA inspectors. A QA inspector may have anywhere from 8 to 10 work orders to inspect and may be required to visit a single site multiple times throughout the installation process, a process which can be affected by many variables, including distance between addresses, contractor issues, and unforeseen circumstances. Once a contractor has been assigned a work order, it's time to move the specific unit from the staging area or yard. A USACE QA inspector visually inspects the outside of the unit before it leaves the yard. Basically we get the work order and we check the serial number of the trailer against the actual number on the trailer. Then we get who is it going to, the name of the person and the address. Then we mark down the number of bedrooms, we mark down who's hauling it and the name of the driver, the time we okay it in and a transponder number, which is a GPS tracker device on it. Then we walk around the trailer and we check to make sure everything's okay visually outside. Then we put a piece of tape on the trailer to mark that it's a Corps of Engineers trailer. We're checking the windows, the doors, the tires, uh, basically anything on the trailer that might be uh, damaged. We've had a roof day roof damages already where the corner has been busted up and stuff like that and they didn't get it as the trailer goes in but we check it going out and we note it on here so that when it gets in the field they know the contractor didn't do it now if it's damaged between here and out in the field well the contractor did the damage or something happened to the trailer if the visual inspection is adequate the contractor hauls the unit from the yard and delivers it to the specified address as the contractor installs the unit, the USACE QA inspector assigned to that particular work order must ensure that the contractor is performing to specifications. Here's how it should work, but please note, these steps may not always occur in the order in which they are about to be presented. The contractor begins by blocking and leveling the MHU. Blocking requirements can vary per disaster. For example, during the 2016 Louisiana flood response, contractors were required to lay down a plastic moisture barrier to prevent seepage from the ground into the unit. When the unit is being blocked in place, it should be checked to ensure it is level in all directions. The specifications of the contract will provide more detail as to what is acceptable for peer construction. The QA inspector should check for specific blocking requirements per the contract for a particular work order and check both the inside and outside of the pier. The weight of the unit should not be supported on the sewer pipe. Next, the contractor will anchor and strap down the unit. Again, the anchoring requirements will vary based on location. The USACE QA inspector should be aware of the local requirement and inspect this process to ensure everything is performed to local code. The QA inspector should consult the contract for the proper requirements for that particular contract and ensure all potential tripping hazards are painted or marked for maximum visibility. 
When inspecting the anchoring, the inspector should be sure that utility lines are not enclosed in the strapping and that the strapping is connected to the correct location on the unit. Next, the contractor will begin addressing the utilities. The connections should be inspected to assure they are tight fitting and will function properly. Sewer connections may be above ground if allowed by the locality unless the mission is being executed in a cold climate. The QA inspector will check the sewer pipe connection for leaks and check the slope of the sewer pipe drain. The drain should slope to meet code. Straps should be used to anchor the pipe every four feet. The contractor will also connect to the water utility. The QA inspector will ensure that the connections meet the specification in the contract. The electricity will be hooked up to the unit. A utility company may install a second power meter for each MHU rather than tie into the existing power source for the address. The contractor will also build steps, a ramp, or platform steps depending on the type of unit and the special needs of the occupant. FEMA follows the Uniform Federal Accessibility Standards UFAST, rather than the American Disabilities Act ADA regulations. The USA's QA inspector should inspect this process and ensure that the steps or ramp meets the specifications in the contract. Handrails must be provided along both sides of the ramps. Ramp and platform step surfaces must be stable and slip resistant. The contractor is also responsible for skirting the unit. The QA inspector should ensure the contractor leaves an access panel for later inspection under the unit. Finally, the contractor will set up the inside of the unit to include all furniture and living kits. Each unit comes fully furnished, including dishes, towels, and sheets for the occupant. The contractor will also clean the inside of the unit during this final step. Now it is time for the Ready for Occupancy or RFO inspection. This is the last step before USA signs the unit back over to FEMA, which will lease in an occupant after that. The USACE QA inspector will work through the RFO checklist item by item to ensure everything is working properly. When the USACE QA inspector is satisfied, the FEMA inspector will be notified and will complete his or her inspection as well. Once FEMA is satisfied, the USACE QA inspector signs paperwork that returns the responsibility for that unit back to FEMA. The FEMA inspector will then contact the occupant and complete the paperwork to license the occupant into the unit.